We're going to go to, we're going to flip over to the Raiders now. And um, the Put On Waivers podcast is um, kind of kind of just, kind of just fell into my lap and just, I, I, I kind of always wanted to do that, do, 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 a, do a show by that name anyway. So let's just jump right into it. Um, the Gruden Presser, um, and they're always like, it is what it is. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's a media guy talking to a bunch of media guys. Um, you know, he never, it's, really, it's, 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 it's always a show. It's always a show. He's, you know, he is a, you know, he's, he's the realtor who will sell you everything, you know, make you feel like the house is going to make it, make you feel like the house is going to be great. Even though the house got um, termites or something like that. Um, what, what, what was your, what was your biggest takeaways from the, from the Gruden um, uh, presser? And, um, and what are your thoughts about, um, you know, the guys he likes or loves or whatever, whatever. Yeah, the biggest thing, and I think Gruden said it great, is he said, we're the best of the worst and the worst of the best. Uh, when he, they asked him, how do you grade last season? And they went eight and eight. So basically, like, sure. <laughs> we're really good at as far as the bottom of the league and we're at the bottom of as far as the good teams in the league. And I think he did his normal selling job. Like he sold you on every guy they've drafted the last three or four years. Um, there were some, some omissions when he was speaking about specific position groups that I found interesting. I think right away was the defensive line when he started rattling off the defensive linemen and talking about Ngakwe first and foremost and, and how he's a difference maker and he's on the rise and he's a team leader and a captain. He talked about Crosby, he talked about Koontz, he talked about Phylon, talked about Jefferson, and he never mentioned Farrell. Um, and then later there was another question where someone asked him about Farrell and then and he mm -hmm. kind of talked about Farrell a little bit, but, um, and then the article comes out yesterday from Vic Tay for the, that Farrell's basically going to be a second teamer and he's going to be fighting for, for snaps, um, both outside and inside, which, which to me, and I've, I've said this since his first year, that fifth year option, it's not, it's getting declined. It's not happening. Uh, Cleveland Farrell's a Raider for this year and next year, and then, and then he won't be on this team anymore. Um, but do you know, just. Listening to him talk about certain players, I think that jumped out at me. One was Ty, uh, Gillespie, the safety. Like he gave him pretty big praise. Uh, mentioned the safety situation is really fluid about who plays in the box and who plays in the post, and definitely said that he could do both. Um, he even mentioned him as a potential dime linebacker um, as well. So I think Gillespie's impressed them, and he's going to find his way on the field in some package at some point pretty early. And then he did mention he was a dynamic special teams player and. I want to say that he was a gunner at Missouri, um, which is intriguing for a, a big hitter, a guy that can run, that can get down the field and help this defense. Um, the, it was emergent to me when he spoke about the offensive line. I found that to be interesting as well. He mentioned um, clearly he wanted to use the salary cap as kind of an excuse as to why he moved on from some of those guys, which I thought was, was pretty weak because um, they could have kept those guys if they wanted to. Um, but he mentioned, you know, the salary cap went down for the first time in a long time. We had to move on uh, and mentioned specifically Andre James is emerging player. Um, mentioned that they had to extend Colton Miller. They didn't have to. They had him under contract this year and they could have extended him next year. So I, I thought of his explanation for why they moved on from the offensive line was pretty weak. I, I thought he could have just mentioned, hey, you know, we want to switch up to an outside zone running team instead of an inside zone. We, we wanted some different body types. We wanted to get younger. We wanted to get more athletic. Um, we wanted to, to fill other holes on this team, and he didn't go that route. Um, and then, you know, he, he loved Leatherwood, which you'd expect. Uh, they picked him in the first round, but he had very, very high praise for, for Leatherwood. And it seems like most of the players in camp do as well. Denzel Good came out and spoke very glowingly of him, and Incognito has. Um, so that's a positive. Lincoln Kennedy um, loves him. They haven't put on pads yet, so that's – and I haven't seen anything about him lining up and in pass protection against Ngakwe or Crosby and how he's holding up there. Um, Twitter is going to explode one way or the other. If he does well in pass block, it's going to be like the defensive ends suck. The defensive ends get the best of them. It's going to be Leatherwood sucks. That's my one thing I hate about training camp. Like, these guys are pros. Some of these guys are all pros, and they're going to beat the other guy across – yeah, and, 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 and you're, going, you're going against your own team. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're not, I mean, are you going to, like, you can, you're competing, but are you going to fully drive your arm through the throat of Max Crosby? No. <laughs> and the other scared. thing that, that I found interesting was his praise for the secondary, basically saying he's fired up about the secondary if it's not the strength of a team. 
They've made some real mistakes. I would argue it's not the strength of the team. There's a lot of potential, um, but a lot of those guys have a long way to go to being solid everyday regular players uh, in a top 10 or 15 defense. Uh, and then the internet kind of blew up on his Damon Arnett quote. I went back and listened to it this morning. They were like, oh, he said he's a starter. He never said that. He said he was an opening day starter last year, emphasizing that he had talent. Um, and he does. I, I still don't think Arn- I still don't think he's going to start. I still think it's Casey Hayward and, and Trayvon Mullen until proven otherwise. Um, and just, you know, listening to him talk about Hobbs glowingly, I think Hobbs is going to win that slot position. And he's going to be the slot corner, especially with Nevin Lawson being suspended and kind of didn't hear about again Isaiah Johnson's on ended up on an injured list to start camp haven't heard about him all off season Amika Robertson didn't hear anything about him um, so I think this team is going to be a little bit different but uh, in a good way and then just all the praise from everybody about Gus Bradley I and mean, Gruden loves him Carr loves him Crosby loves him Farrell loves him Abram loves him everyone loves him um, I don't remember the last time I've heard this much praise for a coordinator for the Raiders in a, in a long time. So hopefully, and they don't need to go bananas on the field. I just need them to be a, like 15 to 20th in the league as far as points allowed uh, to help out this offense. But it sounds like everything's going well. Again, it's the first press conference, the first time he's spoken since January. And of course, everything's glowing now. They haven't put the pads on. No, There's no adversity yet. So um, I'm kind of in the mindset I've been a fan for, going on I'm 43 years old it's been a long time I'm over these preseason offseason awards it to me it matters basically September 13th to January whatever the last game of the season those 17 weeks uh there's no awards given out uh, in August this is this this period of time is just for me to um not get the update on my phone that says somebody's out for the year yeah <laughs> that's basically it's make sure no one gets hurt i tell yeah. my wife that all the yeah. time yeah <laughs> make sure nobody gets hurt make sure they're in condition ready to go but nobody gets hurt and then i think the i think those them surviving week one is always huge because i feel like when you get you some of some players get like rugs have something lingering from week one like i mean like you don't like i you want to get through week one pretty uns, uh, unscathed um they have a short week week one which is like mind-boggling to me because you could have easily could easily put the Raiders and Steelers on um, you know, on Sunday Night Football right after that um, and get it's a 10 a.m. kickoff too. Yeah, and the, which makes no goddamn sense. Um, it, no. it could they, they could have been a four they could have been they could have been a four o'clock um, um, at least a four o'clock um, thing there. Um, yeah, I, I just remember so many guys in preseason. I remember Raider Nation going crazy about Chris Warren. Remember Chris Warren? Oh man. Chris Warren, they look, look at look at these runs, and you know where's Chris Warren right now. So, uh, it, it, the training camp training camp has changed. It's about staying healthy, understanding the concept of what the coaches are trying. The coaches are trying to put down. I'm excited for Hobbs. Hobbs is the guy who I really, I'm excited about his play and and where where he fits in this team. Um, when you look at you know Gus Bradley, there's always a couple like unknown like physical physically gifted players who played on the pro who played on the almost Padres, sorry. The um <laughs> the Chargers when he was um when he was there and who you might not who you say, oh wow, that guy's a pretty good player. So let's let's just see if he can um if he can kind of rekindle that um with the with the Raiders. He's respected. He's a guy who would work in the league if he wasn't with the Raiders. Like yeah. if if Paul Gunther was a guy who people thought highly of, he would be a D- DC right now. He's not a DC right now because he is not good at his job. <laughs> it's just it's just that simple. So, and uh, so, I'm excited to, to see that part of it. I mean, I think the rate. I think in the past, I, um, I'm not. I think the point. I mean, things have pretty much stayed the same as far as Baltimore goes defensively. And cars usually play pretty well against Baltimore. He's had some pretty good success against Baltimore. I was there for the three crab, the three crab tree game, the, the, the three touchdown game. I was in the end zone. I was like, that was my end zone. I was like, oh, keep doing it again, do it again, do it again, keep going. It. Um, but like that's all that game. His first, one of his one of his the high scoring game he won. Um, the Raiders won when when they came to Oakland that time. I mean, he's played, he's played pretty well there. Um, I, against this defense so we'll see what happens as far as far as that goes even with the great corners they have I think you know Waller and Moreau could really 
you know, can really get some to get some things done in that game. We'll break that game down a month from now. I can't, I can't, I guess. But um, you know, at the end of the day, he has, and then basically, so since, since basically since, since the time he got hired, he has been you're preparing for Baltimore, and you're preparing for Lamar Jackson. So I just want to see with all that time for all that, and he's is a good player he's played against before. I want to see how they perform in that moment against. You know, a guy who is going to be who is the MVP, an MVP candidate every year. I mean, that's the biggest thing. Like, can they compete against that level of running quarterback? Because we have seen plenty of Raider defenses not be able to handle running quarterbacks. Yeah, can they keep him in the pocket? But to me, like, that's not going to be a game where I'm going to judge the defensive line based on sacks. It's going to be based on how many times can they keep him in the pocket and make him. A, throw the ball outside the numbers because he wants to yes. throw it over the middle of the field. Every time. So, you know, leverage that. Have inside leverage on the corners and make him throw the ball outside the numbers and, and just try to keep him in the pocket as much as they can. Um, I'm interested to see in this defense what they do early in the season as far as with Bradley. Do they play a lot of nickel against 11 personnel or do they play more base defense? Because Littleton – and Moro can both run, and you're just having them play hook curl responsibilities. Um, you can keep them on the field rather than expose a rookie like Hobbs, uh, unless it's a team like the Chiefs that has Tyreek Hill, you yeah. can blaze down the middle of the field. So it's going to be interesting week in and week out. They have pieces they can move around um, based on matchups, especially along the defensive front, and then obviously what they can do in the secondary. So I think there are going to be weeks where maybe our net's going to play a little bit more than Hayward and weeks where Hayward plays more than our net. Um, but no, Gus Bradley, like you said, he'd have a job um, in a minute if he wasn't with the Raiders, and which we can't say about a lot of defense coordinators they've had in the past uh, in a long time. And just to me, it's just, it's refreshing to hear the upbeat, positive comments from everybody on the offense, on the defense, on the coaching staff, mm-hmm. um, you didn't hear any of those comments in any time during Paul Gunther's tenure. You never heard the, the guys on the defense or the offense or even the coaching staff other than Gruden saying at one point he thought he'd be a head coach in this league, which was laughable on hard knocks. Um, but yeah, to me, it's, it's he's going to make it real simple. And these guys are going to play fast and they're going to understand their roles. Now there's going to be schemes where he's going to get out scheme um, where you can scheme up a cover three defense if the pass rush doesn't get there and they're going to give up some big plays. But at the same time, I think letting these guys understand the responsibilities and they're only going to be doing three or four different things in certain coverages is, is really going to help uh, some of the veterans. And, and what can he do with Jonathan Abram? Like he's got to figure out how to make him into an above average to, to good safety. And mm-hmm. cause he has the physical ability to do it. Now we'll see if he can put him in a position to do that. And do they turn him into a pass rusher? A la Jerwin James, a la, a la Jamal Adams and yeah. get him up by a lot the line of scrimmage and just turn him loose. Yeah, so I mean it's gonna be he, interesting. And, and I love the influence that that um and then this is where John having a guy who he has a relationship with and trust is a little bit is a little is is nice because you they, he's having conversations with John and he's saying that listen, I know y'all took I know y'all took this dude fourth overall, but he really can't get to the quarterback. I get, I get it. I get, I, I get it. But he just, he just, there's certain, he's having those, he's able to have those conversations. And John is like, you know, you know, John is, I mean, John's all about his offense. We're reading books about his offense. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So like, so like we, John's all about his offense. So, so as long as, so as long as, um, you know, he can get that, give that, give him the autonomy. Yes. You're the head coach and everything like that. But you want that guy to just give you stops, get you some turnovers so you can get the ball back. Like, you know what I mean? You just want to get the ball back. Just, I'll just If they just are just like, they go from last to, you know, 25th, that might be enough <laughs> to, make, to make the playoffs. If they get into the teens, they should make the playoffs. Like, you know what I mean? So th- this is, I think that, you know, I love the fact that they do have all those different pieces. I love the dynamic um, they, they, you know, they got, they got Cujo back. They got all they got. Um, they have, um, you, you mentioned Gillespie, uh, you know, I don't know about Diablo's injury, but we'll see about that part of it. But I mean, they have Jonathan Abram. They do have actual, like, I'm not sitting there watching, um, Eric Harris and, 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 and you know what I mean? Like, I'm not, love it. and they're in love. Oh God. They're, they're in love. Like, I don't want to see those guys unless it's special teams. Like those are special teams players. 
they're not they're not actual NFL safeties. So and they're not prospects who who you who for the future at all. So to see him have some pieces here, and you know he had a big influence in that draft room because you can look at the draft and see that. I, I think there's players that the Raiders took who they wouldn't have taken in the past. So this should be fun. I mean, it, I think I think that's the part I'm looking forward to see the see the most. I'm not I'm not, I'm gonna look at the whole season. I'm not gonna be like oh they take you know if if you know those guys get paid too. So if the Ravens score in the first drive, I'm not gonna say oh okay, here we go here we go again. I mean, I want to let me see the whole game. Let me see how it works. Let me see if they can hold them to 24 points in that game. You know, that would be a big win <laughs> for, for, for a rare defense. Like, you know, I mean, let's just, I mean, you're laughing, but I'm laughing too in my heart because I'm saying yeah. the same saying the same stuff. Like, it's the truth. Like, they can they do those things? It's big. To me, can they just get off the field on third and 10 plus? Like, because it was a toss-up. Like, third and 15, it was 50-50. The other team was good in it last year. Third and, you mentioned third and 15 against third and 15 against Drew Locke. Can't get off the field. Yeah. And then uh, it's interesting, Michael Silver just tweeted, he must be a Raiders camp today, that, that Cleveland Farrell is clearly running with the twos um, that, and Gawkway and Crosby are the starters. And then there was a mention yesterday in an article that, that Solomon Thomas, who they brought in and said was going to be, you know, the three technique on the interior. There's already a lot of concerns about how big he is, and they're thinking about moving him back outside um, where he would play – you know, at the five technique, the snaps he gets. So where's Farrell going to get snaps in this season? So, so question, I, I, I did see that. And um, I do I do find um, Solomon Thomas to be an intriguing part of this Raider team. When you say too big, is it too big out of shape or just physically he just fits that position better than being inside? No, I mean, he was too small. I don't know too if small. Oh, like, he's, okay. he's, about, he's about 280 pounds. So to yeah. play on the interior – against those big 330 pound guards is, is a little tough. Now he can do it in spots. I don't think he can be a full-time player on the interior. He's a rotational, yeah. you know, three technique on pass rush downs. But when you watch his tape, it's it was Solomon Thomas. He's a much better run defender than he is pass rusher, even on the interior. So you bring in a 280 pound guy who you think is going to give you pass rush in the three technique, but that's not his strength. And I think Hopefully they're starting to figure that out because the article clearly mentioned that they're going to move Thomas back outside um, where he's going to have to be the backup to, to Crosby. And now Farrell is going to get some snaps, I would think, you know, over at left end, some at right end. But most the majority of the snaps are probably going to be as a three technique inside or as a pass rusher on and passing downs. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. That's a shame. We'll see. Um is, is Nevin, Nevin Lawson making making his squad? Yeah, I mean, if they really he, like he probably, what they he have probably Hobbs, does. I'd say he – it's going to depend because I think Hobbs clearly is making the team. And if Hobbs is the starter there, how much – it's going to come down to can you carry Lawson for two weeks? Um, and what do they think of Amik Robertson? Because it's basically going to be down to if they, if they trust Amik Robertson enough, to where they can move on from Lawson, they'll probably do it. Mm -hmm. um, the first two weeks, I don't think they'll have to decide because they can, they'll can. they have a roster exemption. So um, they'll keep, hopefully, Robertson around for two weeks and see what he does. Robertson's going to have to show up on special teams because he didn't play a lot of special teams last year. And can Arnett, are, are they confident enough that Arnett or Hayward could slide down and play the slot as well? Because um, they're only going to carry probably five or six corners. I, I would say... At this point, maybe five corners, five safeties, because they have a lot of talent at the safety position. Yeah. So those numbers in the, in the cornerback are going to dwindle quickly, because you know that Mullen, Arnett, um, and Hobbs are making this team. I would assume Rasul Douglas probably will as well. So that leaves one or two spots for about four or five corners. And did you see the um... – a friend of the program, um, BD Williams, put out those um, those stats. Um, the coverage numbers. The coverage numbers um, with those play with um, some of the with Mullen and some of the some of the linebackers as well too. Did you um, get just peek at those? I glanced at them, but I, I couldn't recite them off the top of my head. Yeah, so Other than I think there was one mention that Rasul Douglas is, is kind of a tight end stopper. Like he's got pretty good numbers against tight end. Okay, so that's a good one. So here is. So this is basically um, the Raiders and how they did a, in cover three. Um, some of that stuff is, you know, as far as some of the targets are are kind of are kind of are kind of low. So, you know, Rasul Douglas, he talked about the tight ends and stuff like that. Um, so we'll see we'll see if you know the, this division does have tight ends. 
who can play. So we'll see. What, so we'll see how he does. I'll see how he does there. Also, um, the numbers where you know Casey Hayward and Trayvon Mullen um, have pretty good numbers against the against cover three. Um, but you know, for yep. for Casey Hayward, he has a lot more experience in that. Where you know Trayvon is just who know who. I mean, like listen. If, Trayvon could have been playing cover three. We have no idea um, what what defense that he was playing last year because because of the, because of the coordinator. So, um, well, 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 I'm excited about that part of it. I, you know, I does I, you know, do you like we we, we can talk about the defense and, and nauseam as far as that goes. Um, a guy who I know that some who who flashed last year. Do you feel like there's a spot for, and we're going like well, maybe more a little bit more down the roster? Is a guy like Kendall Vickers, and you know what is like what is it? Will there be? I, I also didn't hear anything about Carl Nassif. Like, I mean, is is there going to be? And I know that it's going to come off weird, but if he does not make the roster, will there be backlash from people who don't know football um, that he doesn't make the roster? Well, to answer Vickers, I, I don't think Vickers makes this team. I think on the interior, you're going to have some combination of, of Phil Young's making this team, Jefferson, Hankins, um, and then probably you're going to count on Farrell getting some snaps inside, uh, potentially, you know, Dickerson that came over from the Titans. So it's an uphill battle for me. Um, and that doesn't mean even, even Solomon Thomas as well. So it's an uphill battle for Vickers. To me, he probably ends up on the practice squad. Uh, I don't think teams are going to be lining up to claim him if you waive him at the end of camp. Uh, as far as NASIB, he's fighting to be that that fifth defensive end uh, yeah. on this team if they're going to carry five. It's clearly that that Farrell is going to p- make this team, Koontz, and Gakwe and Crosby. Those four are locked in stone, barring injury. Uh, and then at that point, if they're comfortable with Solomon Thomas, you know, moving outside and giving you that flexibility to be an inside-outside guy, he would definitely have an advantage over NASA in making the roster. Um, so at this point, to me, it's – they probably keep him, I would think, because of the salary cap ram- ramifications. They're going to mm-hmm. take a cap hit to release him. Uh, and he's a veteran. He did flash a little bit of pass rush ability. Um, to me, if you keep him, he's probably a game day inactive most weeks, unless, again, there's an injury to, to one of those other three or four guys. Or, or Koontz isn't ready to go week one if he's just – they don't feel physically that he's ready to give them pass rush. Um, but to me, Koontz can, get, can play special teams as well uh, as an undersized guy that can run. He's basically built like a, a linebacker. Yeah. So when you start getting these decisions on who's going to make the roster and let alone who's going to be active, it's do they play special teams or not. And, and Carl Nassa, to me, is not going to give you anything on special teams. And mm-hmm. as a fifth – as a fifth defensive end, he's probably inactive as he was last year. He was a healthy scratch for a few games down the stretch. Yeah, um, I think I think they also mentioned Nicholas Murrow, and I think Nicholas Murrow is a guy who they really, who they really, um, who they really like a lot is, is, is um, in, in in this defense. Um, you know, I, I I think the underrated part of this football team is the line. I like the three linebackers. I like Wiskowski. I, I think they, I think they all can run. They all can tackle. They all can play. I think they all can play in this defense. They they have some versatility with the three of them. Um, you you don't usually play three linebackers at one time, unless it's like a short yardage situation um, or anything like that. You're not going to play those guys. But but if they do have to go to, they do rotate these, and it's going to be rotations between the three of them. Um, you know, I like what I I like what I've seen from them. Both of those both of those both of those guys, and I do like the hands. Of, I mean, talk, you talk about playing the curls and all that stuff like that. Like Corey Littleton from his day, days with the Rams, he has the ability to pick the ball off and take it back to the house. Um, you know, we saw um, Nicholas Morrow get get picks um, in the past as well. And you know, the one handed interception that um, you know that Drew Locke threw to um, Krakowski, um, yeah. Krakowski shows his athleticism. I do think it's an underrated part of the team where they they do have some they do have really good trio of linebackers not great but a really good solid solid group no definitely and it was it was interesting that that Gruden came out and he said that Morrow was potentially a captain on this team and he was a difference maker in the middle of the defense um he's gonna he's gonna line up he's gonna play will linebacker he's gonna play the weak side uh when they do go to nickel I think that he's he is gonna get some run and and if him and Littleton can can show that they can play pass coverage in this defense I would expect those two to be the nickel 
linebackers the majority of the season. Now, it might be Kwiatkowski early in the season, um, just a veteran uh, who's been around a little bit longer, but Morrow's going to find his way on the field. He's a good blitzer. Uh, out of the three, I would say he's the best blitzer of the three. Uh, Littleton just, to me, doesn't have enough strength, and he really didn't provide much uh, on his opportunities last year off Tate. Now, again, that's in Gunther's defense, not Bradley's. And then they are going to find a way to get – at some point, you're going to see Gillespie on the field uh, as a linebacker in some of these nickel and dime packages. Uh, I could see Abrams sliding down in the nickel or dime package to get Gillespie if they want to play him um, in the post in some, some of these defenses. So they have a number of intriguing guys, and that doesn't even mention Javin White, who can run. And I'm not a big Tanner Muse guy, but I'm, uh, they're going to give him a chance to make this roster as well. So the question with those, with those guys, again, is – are they going to be able to stop the run? Yeah. Um, the good news is they don't really have to do that against the Chargers or the Chiefs. They need to get to the passer and play coverage. Um, it will come into effect week one and week two right out of the gate when you're playing the Ravens and then you're playing the Steelers and then the Dolphins are going to try to run the ball too. So you got three games right away where they're going to have to try to stop the run. And then after that, it's let's get the athletes on the field and run around and play coverage. Yeah, we'll see what happens there. Um I think like um, Kerry is making this squad um, in your mind. Can I think Bush, he will just because. Can Bushman, can Bushman push offense. him? He knows the offense. I think, I think Bushman ends up on the practice squad. Carrier mm -hmm. plays all the core special teams. He's yeah. been around. Gruden trusts him. Carr trusts him. He, he knows how to line up at, at the F position. He can line up at the U position, the Y position, in line. He can, he can split out, play, play tight end, uh, detach or. So, and he can even, you know, help out at fullback as well if anything happened to, to Ingold. So I just think he's, he's too valuable as far as everything he brings. He's not really good at anything, but he can do a lot of different <laughs> things well enough. He's a jack of all trades, master of none. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's it. So, um, yeah, that's very true. Um, a lot of talk about a lot going on in the world of sports and uh, NFL kind of kicks that off next week when, um, when the, the first preseason game starts, the Raiders, First preseason game is against Seattle, correct? Against Seattle. Yeah, fourteenth. Yep. Fourteenth. Is that in Seattle or is that? A, is that or that would be at Allegiant Stadium. First game inside did, the new. Did they? Did they, did they? Did they? I mean, how many tickets they sell for that thing? The first one. It's sold out to season ticket holders. Wow, they're dying. I, I won't be there. My first game will be September thirteenth against the Ravens. I cannot. I, I cannot. I cannot in any way. I could not. I couldn't justify paying to see. To see that, I mean, it may, I mean, maybe, maybe back in the day when they used to do the through the third, the third preseason game, which were, yeah. where people were played, maybe I could justify um, going to that one, but I can't justify going to that. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. There's listen, a lot, a lot going on. Um, the put on waivers NFL show, put on waivers MLB show um, with myself and James Amato. Um, we got the fantasy football show coming up as well um, with Austin or with Austin Perez. We have that coming up, and then this show here. They put on Raiders podcast um, with myself and Ryan and Ryan Holmes. Um, in parting, Jay, um, Ryan, you have anything to kind of leave us with? No, just this is an exciting time of year. Like, can't wait for the Hall of Fame induction to see Tom Flores and Charles Woodson go into the Hall of Fame. Uh, Megatron's going in, Calvin Johnson. Um, you have two classes, basically. I always like to hear those speeches. Um, sometimes they're really good. Sometimes they're kind of boring, but yeah. Um, good to see those guys get, get acknowledged for the careers they had, whether they played for the Raiders or not. Um, it's always good to see, because now we're getting to the point where these are guys I watch and I was growing up. It's not, you know, the old guys that my parents used to watch when I was a kid. These are players that I, that I saw in college and saw throughout their NFL careers and, and some of the coaches. And just like you said, the, the big thing now is cross your fingers and hope we get to September 13th with no injuries. I don't care if they go zero and three in the preseason. Three yes. and zero, it doesn't matter. No, no, but no, it, it doesn't. It does not matter. It does not matter. The, the, the whole thing about a preseason preseason is you don't want to get anybody hurt. So that's that's huge as far as that goes. All right, YouTube, Instagram, uh, Facebook, all the other stuff like that. You know, you you, you want to find us, and, and and we're not we're not shy on Twitter. Um, and as the twins just received. Well, the Twins just traded barrels to 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 somebody. I forgot. The, the baseball is on fire right now. As far as this is like the old school trade deadline in right. baseball, that's kind of crazy. It's probably not the Mariners, but let's take a look at it. Um, well, I, th I think it was it was it. Oh, no, it was Blue Jays. Blue Jays. Blue Jays. Blue Jays. Blue okay. Jays. It was Blue Jays. That makes so, sense. So it's so, all so, so Blue Jays out here trying to make the playoffs. Can't believe this. This kid has 
80 RBIs. My goodness. Um, Guerrero was crazy. But um, Rare Nation, peace. See you next time. All right. Take care.